رسول الله حبيب الله الله our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he only humans to be the best and give his best religion to them Allah our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he only humans to be the best and give his best religion to them Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to another live edition of Gardens of the Pious. I begin by praising the Almighty Allah alone and sending the best peace and salutations upon his most beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, welcome back to another episode of Gardens of the Pious, episode number 542 in the Blessed Seas of Riyadh al-Salihin which was compiled by Imam Nawawi, may Allah have mercy on him. And today, inshallah, will be the last segment in chapter number 243, the book of sending the peace and salutations upon the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. And particularly, the obligations and the recommendations and the virtues and the forms of sending the peace and the blessings upon Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we did cover that before in the previous episode remaining with us just a couple of hadith this hadith is simply a reiteration of what we discussed in the previous episode sound hadith collected by Imam Muslim hadith number 1406 عن أبي مسعود البدري رضي الله عنه قال أتانا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ونحن في مجلس سعد بن عبادة رضي الله عنه فقال له بشير بن سعد أمرنا الله تعالى أن نصلي عليك يا رسول الله فكيف نصلي عليك فسكت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم حتى تمنينا أنه لم يسأله ثم قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قولوا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد والسلام كما علمتم سأبو مسعود البدري May Allah be pleased with him narrated that once we were sitting with the Messenger of Allah, we were sitting and the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, approached us. Sa'd ibn Ubadah was sitting with us. So Bashir ibn Sa'd said to the Messenger of Allah, Allah the Almighty has commanded us to do salah upon you how are we supposed to do so what is the wording what is the format what is the best way to do salah upon you the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam kept quiet for so long to the extent that we wished that he never asked him then the messenger of allah peace be upon him answered by saying he should say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad. O oh Allah, exalt the mention of Muhammad and the family of Muhammad as you did exalt the mention of the family of Ibrahim and bless Muhammad and the family of Muhammad as you blessed the family of Ibrahim. Peace be upon them all. Then by the end, you praise the Almighty Allah by saying, indeed, you're all worthy of praise and you're glorified. And then, as far as the greeting, it is as you already know, which is saying, Assalamu alaikum, or Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and wa barakatuh. Here, we already know the wording, and we studied that in the previous hadith. To say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad, kama sallayta ala ali Ibrahim. In one narration, after you say the first segment, 
which is, oh Allah, exalt the mention of Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, you say, innaka hamidun majid, once. Then in this narration, without saying innaka hamidun majid, right away you say, Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad. Oh Allah, bless Muhammad and the family of Muhammad. Kama barakta ala ali Ibrahim. As you bless the family of Abraham, innaka hamidun majid, only once by the end, indeed, you're all worthy of praise, you're all exalted. So we already know the wording. Maybe there is a slight difference, but they're all okay. But in the hadith, there is also another observation. The observation is in, when the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, paused, when he was asked the question, and he paused for a long time. So the companions were worried, because if the Prophet ﷺ did not answer, maybe he's upset. Maybe he didn't want anyone to ask right now or ask this particular question, even though it's a very valid question. But after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded them not to ask until the Messenger of Allah would take the initiative and explain to them, لا تسألوا عن أشياء إن تبدى لكم تسؤكم وإن تسألوا عنها حين ينزل القرآن تبدى لكم Wait, maybe the wahi would explain to you. So the companions were very cautious not to ask any questions. And they would wait. A bad one is coming, he doesn't know the etiquette, and he would be very blunt, and he would ask the Prophet Sallallahu a question, which was in their mind, but they were so polite that they wouldn't ask. So when Bashir ibn Sa'd asked the Prophet Sallallahu and he was quiet, the Sahaba got really worried, and they said that, uh, we wish that he did not ask the question. We were so concerned that the Prophet ﷺ may be upset, maybe he didn't want him to ask this question. And that's why they counted all the questions that the Sahaba asked the Messenger of Allah, and they were able to count them. There were not too many, unless, as I said, a bad one is coming from outside, doesn't know the etiquette, and you just ask. And sometimes you say, Oh, Muhammad, tell me this and that. You know, not all messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa But by the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum, wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati, wa raditu lakum al-islam adina. The ayah of Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter number 5, which means he already explained everything in depth. He already explained everything in detail, and the deen is perfect. You will not find a question lacking an answer whether pertaining to our worship, or worldly life, or the Bazakh, or even the hereafter, and what will take place after resurrection. And that is the meaning of the completion of the deen. The last hadith in this chapter, chapter number 243, Babu al-Amri bi salati alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa fadliha wa ba'du siyaghiha, the last siyagha, the last form, of sending the peace and the blessings upon the Prophet ﷺ by adding وَأَزْوَاجِهِ وَذُرِّيَّتِهِ And when I explain a couple weeks back, when I explain the meaning of the word al, I said it has two meanings, one which is general and one which is specific. The general meaning, all the followers of the Prophet ﷺ. So in this case, when you say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad, you're asking Allah to exalt the mention of Muhammad and his family and his wives and his offspring and the entire ummah, all the followers of Muhammad, peace be upon him, the Sahaba, the Tabi'een and us until the Day of Judgment. Because the word al means the followers. The specific meaning means ahl or ahlul bayti or alul bayti refers to the family and the offspring of the Prophet Sallallahu and Abdul Muttalib in general, Bani Hashim, Bani Abdi Manaf, uh, Aqil and his family, um, Al-Abbas, and uh, obviously the offspring of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al-Hasan wal Hussein and their offspring and so on. The children of Ali and Fatima. And also that includes his wives. So Alul Bayt is not only by the lineage 
or by the blood relationship, but also by a nasab, getting married too. And Al Abbas was asked, aren't the wives of the Prophet ﷺ among his Ahlul Bayt? He said, of course they are. And how did you know that? Check out Ayah number 34, chapter number 33, Surah Al Ahzab, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said specifically when he was addressing the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, he said to them, Innama yuridu Allahu liyuzhib ankum urridisa ahl al bayti wa yutahirakum tatahira. From the beginning, Allah was addressing specifically the wives of the Messenger of Allah. Then by the end, he said, Why Allah is giving them these specific instructions and guidelines. He said because that is exclusively because Allah wishes, Allah wants, Allah likes to remove the impurities of sins from you, Ahlal Bayti, and purify you, وَيُطَهِّرَكُمْ and purify you, Tathira, with extensive purification. The ayah is addressing whom? وَقَرْنَا فِي بُيُوتِ كُنَّا and if you scroll up ayah uh, number uh, 32, uh, it will be addressing the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So in 33, he commanded them, وَقَرْنَا فِي بُوتِ كُنَّا يعني Abide in your houses, do not go out like the rest of people. When you speak, you speak with a mild tone, lower your voice, do not speak softly. Uh, then he said, all of that because Allah wants to remove the impurities of sin from you, O oh, the family of Muhammad. يُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّدِسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ Addressing whom? The wives of the Prophet ﷺ. And this is presented in the last hadith, hadith number 1407 by Abu Humaydin al-Sa'idi رضي الله عنه. قالوا يا رسول الله كيف نصلي عليك؟ قال قولوا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى أزواجه وذريته كما صليت على آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى أزواجه وذريته كما باركت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد والله brothers and sisters I know those who are watching the program right now, Alhamdulillah, of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, the mainstream Ummah, they all love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his family members, his wives, all his companions and his followers, they revere them, وَيَتَرَضَّوْنَ عَلَيْهِمْ and they ask Allah to exalt their mention and bless them all. But right now, I'm inviting those who have some issues with some of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ and some of his wives. And unfortunately, they consider themselves Muslims. They consider themselves love the Prophet and his family. And they say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad. So they keep invoking Allah to exalt the mention of Muhammad and his family. And when they recite the Quran, they recite, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهِرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرَ Then they turn around to curse some of the wives of the Messenger of Allah and hurt them by doing so. No way that you can reconcile between your stance, your situation, your belief, and what the Qur'an commands. And what you say, we hear them making tawaf and say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. So you're asking Allah to exalt Muhammad and his wives, Muhammad and his offspring whether you like it or not, because Allah the Almighty stated already that Aisha, Hafsa, uh, Umu Habiba, Umu Salama, Safiya, Zainab bint Khuzayma, Zainab bint Jahsh, and all of them, and Sauda bint Zam'a, uh, Khadija radiyallahu anha, all the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, min ali baytihi, liyudhib ankum urrijisa ahl al bayti wa yutahirakum tathira. What we need to do is use our intellect, utilize the faculties of senses that Allah the Almighty blessed us and equipped us with. You read the Quran, you comprehend the word of Allah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, awla bil min anfusihim, which means the messenger, the prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
has more rights upon the believers than their own selves. وَأَزْوَادُهُ أُمَّهَاتُهُمْ أَزْوَادُهُ plural, referring to all his wives. He died while having nine of them. And those who died before him. So all of them are the mothers of the believers. This is simple and plain Arabic. There is no ambiguity in it. Same surah, surah al-Ahzab. Look what he says. وَأَزْوَاجُهُ أُمَّهَاتُهُمْ What do you do with this word? What do you do when Allah says, Aisha رضي الله عنها is the mother of the believers. Says who? Allah. Allah, whom we're asking to bless and to exalt the mention of Muhammad and the family of Muhammad. He says, Aisha is our mother. Hafsa رضي الله عنها is our mother. Zainab, the two Zainabs, Umu Habiba, Umu Habiba, the daughter of Abu Sufyan, رضي الله عنهم, may Allah be pleased with all of them, are the mothers of the believers. So if you still insist that she is not your mother, what can I do for you? You choose not to be among the believers because Allah said his wives are the mothers of the believers. If you say, no, she's not my mother, then you're not one of the believers. And in this case, you're so right, even if you still pray, even if you're very keen to go for Hajj, but you consider yourself one of the non-believers and you refuse to enter among the mu'mineen, whom Allah says, وَأَزْوَاجُهُ أُمَّهَاتُهُمْ May Allah guide us to what is best. Also the offspring of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whether the children of Ali, all of them in general, Ali and Fatima obviously, or the children of Al-Hasan uh, and al Hussein, May Allah be pleased with all of them. By that we're done with the beautiful chapter of the virtues and the recommendations of sending the peace and salutations upon our most beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wherever you are. After we finish the episode inshallah I hope we all get to do that for some time, a few minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes in order to comply with what we learned from the beginning of the chapter. With a new chapter and with a new book, the compilation of Riyadh al-Salihin is divided into books and each book is divided into chapters. We are about to study the 15th book in the collection of Riyadh al-Salihin or Gardens of the Pious by Imam Yahya ibn Sharaf al-Nawawi, may Allah have mercy on him. The 15th book is a book of Al-Adhkar, plural of Dhikr, plural of Dhikr. And the first chapter in this book is Babu Fadli Zikri Wal Hassi Alayhi. The chapter of the excellence of the remembrance of Allah and encouraging doing it. Wal Hassi Alayhi. As usual, we'll begin with a beautiful ayah. We have a few ayat referring to the importance of a zikr. And then we'll define the meaning of al-zikr. Then inshallah we'll tackle the ahadith recommending al-zikr and the difference between the general zikr and the specific zikr. Al-zikr which is to be recited at certain times and with certain number of times versus mutlaq al-zikr where you can recite it whenever and as many times as you wish. Qala Allah Ta'ala in Surah Al-Ankabut in ayah number 45. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أتل ما أوحي إليك من الكتاب وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون الله ذو أمتي is commanding Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the entire Ummah in his person by saying, O Muhammad, recite what has been revealed unto you of the Quran, Al-Kitab, and perform 
as salah and the performance of as salah in Arabic is never referred to it as salli rather aqim as salah establish not just offer establish the prayer offer it properly at its fixed times with the proper means of purification and tahara and with the adequate khushu'ah and tranquility that's why Allah says aqim as salah not offer as salah establish as salah the prayers namaz then he says the hikmah the wisdom why he commanded the believers to offer the five daily prayers and the sunan before and after and the witr the night prayer tahajjud istikhara tasabih duha prayer salatul awabin and all of that what is the purpose of standing up bound down prostrating yourself he says in the munkar. most certainly the prayers will hinder will stop and will prevent the person who prays from indulging into illicit relations al fahsha <coughs> which is every great sin of every kind particularly the unlawful sexual relations and then al munkar every act of disbelief or associating partners to Allah in worship and every wicked deed so al fahsha could go under the word munkar but it is mentioned specifically because al fahsha normally in the Quran refers to the outside marriage relationship any sexual relationship outside marriage is fahisha <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in surah al-isra wala taqrabu zina do not go near zina innahu kana fahishatan do not go near zina because it is an illicit act it's a great sin it's an evil and a heinous deed so fahisha in the Quran normally refers to the sexual relations outside marriage fornication adultery or the introductions to that so <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regularly offering the prayers the mandatory ones and the recommended ones the voluntary prayers all of that will help the believers and those who pray to stay away to keep off the illicit acts the sexual relations which are haram why because they pray on regular basis well munkar and even all kind of sins and deeds major and minor then here the word wala dhikrullahi akbar and indeed the remembrance of Allah is greater when you have af'alu tafdil which is better something is better something is greater then you have two things one is greater than the other so Allah the Almighty said here the dhikr of Allah the remembrance of Allah is greater greater indeed but greater than what Wallahu ya'lamu ma tasna'oon and Allah knows what you do. You didn't answer me. What is the meaning of wala dhikrullahi akbar? This is an amazing, an amazing eloquent speech of Allah, brothers and sisters. As salah, and also this is an amazing understanding of Imam Nawawi to list this ayah as the first reference in the book and under the chapter of the virtues and the recommendations of the remembrance of Allah so from the beginning Allah didn't say any command of remembering him we have some ayat which explain explicitly ya amanu dhikran kathira. so Allah is commanding directly and explicitly the remembrance of Allah but this ayah didn't mention the word dhikr rather the recommendations in this ayah were as follows number one the recitation of the Quran number two offering the prayers because it helps the person to stay away from what is haram whether sexual relations or vain talk or vain acts then all of a sudden Allah says and indeed wala dhikrullahi akbar the remembrance of Allah is greater do you know greater than what pay attention brothers and sisters this is really amazing what is the recitation of uh, the book of Allah 
the greatest form of remembrance you read in his word so that dhikr and when you say Allahu Akbar and you commence into the prayer you begin by the remembrance of Allah and being with him is greater than anything that's what say Allahu Akbar greater than anything else and in the prayer you start reciting Quran that is dhikr and then when you bow down you make dhikr you rise up you make dhikr sujood you make dhikr so the prayer from beginning to end is about the remembrance of Allah have you done it yes then Allah will deliver to you what he promised he will assist you and keep you off from committing sins from indulging into the fahisha or the illicit relations and guess what as you've remembered Allah indeed Allah is going to reward you by making mention of you and that is the meaning of wala dhikrullahi akbar when Allah makes mention of you, that is Allah greater than you making mention of Allah by saying Allahu Akbar or Subhanallah or reciting an ayah of the Quran or making tasbih or ruku' or sujood. So all of the previous is count as a form of dhikr, the recitation of the Quran and the prayer from beginning to end, the namaz. And then as you do so, you've remembered Allah much, now Allah is going to make mention of your name. Where? In the gathering which is above the heavens, al mala al a'la, before all the angels. And that's why he said, and indeed, the mentioning of Allah to your name is a lot greater as far as reward, as far as an honor for the servant to say Allahu Akbar and subhanAllah, that is expected. But for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from above the seven heavens to look at you and make mention of your name before a gathering of the angels, indeed, that is Allah greater. And Allah is fully aware of what you do. We're going to take a short break. Then soon after, inshallah, we're going to learn the specific meaning of dhikrul abdi lillah versus dhikrullah lil abd. We know how the servant makes dhikr of Allah. But how does Allah make dhikr to his servant or of his servant? Stay tuned. We'll be back, inshallah, in a couple of minutes. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Rasulallah Habiba and welcome back. Let me uh, quickly remind you of our phone numbers. Area code 002 then 023 Alternatively, area code 002 then 0100 And the WhatsApp numbers, area code 001-347-806-0025. And finally, area code 001-361-489-1503. Uh, we have our first caller today, Sister Luba from Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum. Hey, how are you? Alhamdulillah, Sister Luba. Welcome to the program. Go ahead. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, in, uh, in India, a non Muslim committed suicide. Uh, but people are saying it's a murder, so they are sharing their dead bodies. Uh, they are sharing his dead body's picture to show everyone that it was not a suicide, it was a murder. So is it allowed to share those pictures? And can we pray for him uh, so that he can get the justice? Okay. And uh, my second question mm -hmm. is, uh, is my grandparents' brother Mahram for me? Okay. Uh, you're asking, These are my two questions. You're asking about the grandparents of your husband? My grandparents' brother. Okay, I got your question. So with regards to the second question, yes, your grandparent brother is a mahram. Uh, and your grandmother's brother is a mahram as well. So he is like the paternal and the maternal uncle exactly is a mahram uh, with regards to the person in india who is not muslim and committed suicide when you ask a question about what they did whether it's permissible or not well they are not muslims to judge them 
uh, accordingly, this is out of the question. With regards to making dua for the family to get justice, yes, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establish just justice and uh, punish the perpetrators if he was murdered. But to make dua for a person who did not believe in God and ask God to bless him, uh, this is out of the question. We are not allowed. And those who rejected your God are not interested in your supplication to begin with. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Sister Asia from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, Sister Asia. Hello? Yes, I hear you, Sister Asia. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, mashallah, very nice look, shake of uh, studio. The summer look of gardens of bias. Alhamdulillah. I just uh, wanted to uh, give some comment. Jazakallah uh, khair for all your efforts, what we are learning in this uh, gardens of bias. The hadith from Imam Nabi, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, people were asking me uh, to join such group where they are teaching this. And I said, Alhamdulillah, I have been connected uh, for this course since last 15 years. I have joined this institution. And they were surprised. And they think, which institution? You are there from 15 years. I said, hey, that's a Qutah TV channel. And then, inshallah, I, I just pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala till my last breath. I be connected to with this channel, and I learn so many good things from you and from all the shiuks and dais what they are teaching Amen. here. And me, I'll be able to practice and spread this. Amen. Make Amen. dua for me. Jazakallah khair for your efforts. We are learning a lot. Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Asya. May Allah bless you and your family. That's uh, an honorable testimony from you. May Allah accept. Amin. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Um Kulthum from the UK. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Umm Kulthum, welcome to the program. Uh, I want to ask uh, two, three questions. First okay. one is regarding on dice. You know, some board game has dice, and in Islam, uh, it's not allowed to play with the dice. Uh, so right. children ask me sometimes right. why, why it's not allowed. So they ask me, so can you explain this, please? Okay. And and another thing is, um, I'm asking this question on behalf of my niece. She's taking pills, and uh, twice uh, a month she got, has got that her period. So she, does she has to pray uh, the, the five daily prayers, or she has to stop because of that? So what she's and, experiencing is off the period time. You mean? Uh, she gets twice a month. Oh, okay. Uh, is this something new or uh, ever since she started her period, she's been experiencing that? Uh, I'm exactly not sure. Okay, I would appreciate if you can confirm uh, with her. And uh, we're going to be here, yeah. inshallah, or she can call me, okay? Okay, okay. As and far... another, another thing is... Yes. Sorry? Go ahead. Uh, another thing is, um, is there any dua for increase your iman? Of course, of course. Right. Can, you, can, you, can you tell us, please? Sure, inshallah. Uh, Umu Kulthum from the UK asked, why is playing with dice even though in a game is haram? Because if he's gambling, even though there is no money involved, and the Prophet Sallallahu spoke about dice particularly, and he said, playing with it, holding it in your hand is similar to immersing your hand in the blood and the fresh and the flesh of swine, of the pig. So, the games which are based on creativity, intelligence, are approved as long as they're halal. But any game which it's a matter of luck, so there is no effort that is uh, uh, exerted in it. It is originally forbidden because of the idea of gambling. Assalamu alaikum. Fatima from India, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My little Fatima, how are you? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. How are you? Alhamdulillah, wa shukrillah. So what do you have in mind today, Fatima? So, um, Sheikh, please can you describe to me how Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked? My grandmother said she saw him through a certain kind of curtain and she talked to him through a veil. And in her dreams, 
I've been waiting to see the Prophet in my dream for a long time. What ibadah should I do for the Prophet to appear in my dream? MashaAllah ya Fatima. Jazakillahu khairan. And you know, alhamdulillah, we already have this ready for correct recitation. And um, I know you know some surahs by heart. So inshallah, get ready. We're going to call you on Skype. I would like to see you and the viewers would like to see you. Uh, Fatima, I believe you're 10 or 11 years old. Am I correct? Yep, yes, you're, you're 10, right? 11. 11. I'm 11 years old. Okay, mashallah. Okay, big mistake I made. I'm so sorry. So inshallah, I uh, will answer your question and hope to see you inshallah very soon. Uh, leave your number because they're going to arrange with you to participate in the program via Skype inshallah. Fatima, seeing the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him in a dream is possible. And whoever sees the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in his or her dream have actually seen him. And they will get to see him in reality. And shaitan can never resemble the actual image of Prophet Muhammad in the dream or in reality. To see the messenger of Allah, the person has to be in love with him, thinking about him, reading about him. I can assure you, Fatima, you will call me one day and you say, finally, I got to see Prophet Muhammad in a dream. You know, when people keep thinking about things before going to sleep, this is what they see in their dreams, whether good or bad. So we keep thinking about the good things and about Prophet Muhammad and joining him in paradise. May the Almighty Allah grant you and all of us the honor of seeing him in our dreams and sharing with us the glad tiding. Thank you, Fatima. Umm Kulthum from um, the UK, uh, a supplication uh, to increase the Iman, of course. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. Guide us to the straight path. Ya muqallib al qulub. Thabbit qalbi ala deenik. One of the most frequently recited invocation by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And then specifically asking, O oh Allah, increase faith in my heart. It's not only the supplication. Sister Umm Kulthum, by the end of Surah Ali Imran, the Almighty Allah listed some beautiful supplications that the believers normally invoke Allah with. Then he followed that by saying, فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ أَنِّي لَا أُضِيعُ عَمَلَ عَامِلٍ مِّنْكُمْ مِّنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى The ayah. So in this ayah, Allah said, He answered their dua. He responded to them. And what did He say? He said, don't worry, I'm not going to waste the deeds, the work of any of you, but it was dua. But dua, invocation, along with effort that being exerted. So it isn't sufficient to make dua. To make dua, along with working hard, praying on time, making wudu, reciting those adhkar, having a sabakh to recite on daily basis, giving a charity secretly, <coughs> prolong your frustration and ask Allah in your sujood, struggle with yourself against your inner desire, surround yourself with a good company, good deeds increase the iman, bad deeds decrease one's iman. So this is very important. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Rashida from the UK, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have got two questions. Yes. Okay. When is women regular discharge scam? We have to wash our underwear or we don't have to wash? Okay. Thank you. Yes, indeed, and you have to. That has to be washed. And that's why wearing a pad will be sufficient. It will absorb the discharge so you don't have to worry about uh, changing your undergarment or washing it uh, on a regular basis. Um, I want to share with the viewers that if you're interested in participating in the upcoming program of, uh, of Correct Your Citations uh, live via Skype, please send your request here and inshallah our team will get in touch with you and will arrange that. Of course for the sisters, we'll do that with the little ones and with the, with the elders, okay? We prefer not to show the beautiful sisters 
uh, on the screen. You know what I mean. May Allah guide all of us to what is best. Sister Asya said, beautiful sit, mashallah. We have an amazing team. And subhanAllah, this whole thing is less than a couple thousand dollars. The whole thing, by the grace of Allah. We do everything in door and it doesn't cost much. Alhamdulillah wa shukrullah. And the reason we were late, because many of our staff were sick. Yes, they had the COVID-19, but we did not stop for a single day, alhamdulillah. Many of our staff and uh, crew members were sick, and they were away for three weeks or even more, and they take turns. But alhamdulillah, we managed to go live during Ramadan, throughout the month of Ramadan and the month of Shawwal, even though we were short of staff, but finally we're getting back on track. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. And do not forget to vote with regards to the timing. This is the last chance in order to decide whether to keep this time. I know this time is most convenient for the Hindu pack and the Indian subcontinent um, because of the timing uh, convenience for them. I believe it's also convenient for Singapore, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines, okay? Uh, but I don't want to influence your decision. So we have two timing to choose. Um, either one of them is most convenient for the live broadcast of Asquida, Gardens of the Pious, and Correct Your Citation. Either 5 p.m. Mecca time, which is 3 p.m. UK time, five, uh, 4 p.m. Cairo time, or uh, the other time is our regular time in the past before Ramadan, 8 p.m. Cairo time, 9 p.m. Uh, Mecca time, 7 p.m. UK time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. Aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To be the best oh. and give his best to religion to them. Allah, our God, is the greatest. Oh. The one and only glory to him. Oh. He born in humans to be the best oh. and give his best to religion to them. So, why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about him in paradise, worshipping cows, fire, and stones. Selling the best with the cheapest price So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell and paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling their best with the cheapest price